Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 34 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We have been discussing the various methods of purification of organic compounds and in the previous few videos I explained that there are five different ways how we can separate the organic compounds or purify them. The first method is sublimation, the second is crystallization, the third is distillation, fourth is differential extraction and the fifth is chromatography. We have discussed the first three that is sublimation, crystallization and distillation. We've already discussed in the previous few videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fourth method of extraction or separation, which is differential extraction. Let us assume that you have a compound that is soluble in water and we can therefore since it is soluble in water we know that we can separate it either by evaporation that is we boil over the water and the compound is present in the in water and we evaporate it heat it up so that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius it boils over at and the vapors rise and the uh, compound it does not vaporize at that temperature or it is a non-volatile compound. Therefore, the compound remains. So, the simple method would be that you just evaporate the water. If you want to save the water too, you would resort to distillation where you would make a distillation apparatus and the solvent, that is water, would be allowed to evaporate. You will condense it, use a condenser and with the help of the Liebig's condenser, we, uh, we just pass cold water around it in a coat and that condenses the vapors and the water vapor turns back into water and the droplets are collected and you get the solvent too. Now let's assume that there is a situation where the compound is non-volatile, yes, but it cannot take even 100 degrees Celsius temperature. It can decompose even below the 100 degrees Celsius. In that case, how would you separate it? How would you separate it from the solvent in which it is dissolved? In that case, we use the process of differential extraction. We find another solvent in which that compound would be soluble, right? It may not be as soluble as it is soluble in water, but it is soluble in that other compound too. And that other compound is an organic solvent. It is not water. And we know most of the organic solvents do not dissolve in water. So we need a solvent which is a separate solvent and this solvent should not dissolve in water but it should dissolve the organic compound that you are supposed to extract. So what do we do? We take the two that is we had water and we had this organic compound mixed in water and we take the organic solvent like oil or whatever organic solvent you're using, you're using benzene, you could use any of the organic solvents and you take them in a separating funnel or in a flask and what we do, the layer of water and oil or the organic solvent obviously would be separate because they do not dissolve in each other and where is our compound? A compound, our compound is in the water. And what do we want? What is our aim? We want the compound not to be in water. We want the compound to be in the organic solvent layer. So what we do, once we have it in the separating funnel or the flask, we start shaking the flask really vigorously. When we shake the flask vigorously, which is sealed very nicely, and we shake it, the solvents will get mixed because after all, they are two liquids. So they may form globules. Imagine if you take a little, take a little bottle at home, Take some oil and take some water and shake the bottle nicely. And what do you see? That the two layers, they would, uh, the oil and the water, you would see, would kind of disperse. It will form a kind of a colloidal solution where you will see it is translucent uh, through the bottle. When you see it would appear to be translucent and the two layers, they would be kind of mixed together. Now when you leave it for some time, the two layers will again separate out. The oil will start floating on top and the water will come to the bottom. But what did your shaking do? When you shook the, so the solute, that is the organic compound that you are supposed to separate out, that left water and it entered the molecules of the, it entered the little globules of the other organic solvent. So now 
after some time when you waited, you allowed it to settle down, you let it sit for some time. You see that the organic layer comes on top and the water goes down, it again settles down on the bottom, but the organic compound is now present in the solvent layer. It is not present in water. And since this is a separating funnel, what do we do? We open the knob, the water passes out till the last drop of water you find here. And very carefully you try to extract as much water as you can. And now you are left with the organic compound present in the organic solvent. So you no longer have water. And maybe the boiling point of the organic solvent is lower than 100 degrees Celsius. Therefore, you can now carry out the processes of evaporation and distillation, not with water, but with the organic solvent. So it's a two-step process. You first dissolved the organic compound in an organic solvent by shaking the two together. Then we separated out the solvent with the, the new solvent with the organic compound layer through differential, through differential extraction, which is using the separating funnel or a separatory funnel as it is called. And then that organic compound in the, in the organic layer or in the, the new solvent layer is either distilled or evaporated. And since now it is happening perhaps at a lower temperature, that compound which you want to extract does not decompose at that temperature and therefore it is safe when you get it you get it in the pure form after distillation or by evaporation so this is the method of differential extraction now a little modification may be required sometimes the compound that you have may not be as soluble in the organic solvent whenever a compound is not very soluble uh, the solute is not very soluble in the solvent and you want to extract all of the solute, you will need a large quantity of the solvent because per uh, liter, a very small, a very few moles of it are getting dissolved in the, uh, in the solvent. So you will need a large quantity of the solvent and your separating funnel is not really very, uh, a very large apparatus. So what would you do? Since you need a large quantity of the solvent, one way is that this solvent is not expensive and you don't mind wasting it. So you will really keep uh, extracting and then using the water layer, putting it back and adding more solvent and again extracting and adding more solvent. You can do that. Or if you do not want to waste that solvent, what will you do? You will carry out the complete differential extraction, not by evaporation, but by distillation. You will collect the solvent again and then you will use the solvent again with the remaining water layer, again shake it, extract some of the compound, again distill it, collect it, again use it. So you will kind of repeat the process and continue using more and more of the either the same solvent or use a large quantity of the solvent, keep distilling it and recovering it and recovering the excess amount of solvent so that it can be reused. So this is let me now just read what I've written about it and what is in your text. Differential extraction. The organic compound present in aqueous medium, the organic compound is present in the aqueous medium in water, is separated by shaking it with an organic solvent. The organic solvent and the aqueous solution should be immiscible. They should not dissolve in each other. And they can be separated by a separatory funnel. You can separate them by a separatory funnel. So this is the separatory funnel. Here, in the, this is before you started, you had the organic compound in the water layer and you added solvent to the separatory funnel. Then you shook it and after shaking, you got this and letting it sit for some time, the water settled down at the bottom and the organic compound was present in the solvent layer. Now we carried out the differential extraction by using a separatory funnel. And what did we get? We got the oil layer or the organic uh, solvent layer with the organic compound and we put it in a flask and we distilled it and we got the compound here and the solvent was collected. Or if the solvent is not really important, we don't mind losing it, we can use evaporation where the solvent will just evaporate and be lost to the atmosphere. But even in this case, you will get your compound. If the organic compound is less soluble in the organic solvent, a very large quantity of it would be required to extract a small quantity of the compound. I told you that if the solute is not very soluble in the solvent, then you need a large quantity of the solvent to extract it. 
because in even a large quantity very little solute is actually coming in. So in that case the technique of continuous extraction is, is implemented or employed. So what is the technique of continuous uh, extraction? In this you will continue adding more and more solvent and keep shaking it, separating it and again using more solvent and then extracting the solvent and collecting it and reusing it. In this the same solvent is repeatedly used for the extraction. When I told you that we will not use you know unlimited amount of solvent. We will try to distill it, get that, put it back with the water layer which still has some compound, shake it again, extract it again, distill it, use it again. So it can be reused and you can save, you cannot unnecessarily, you need not unnecessarily have to waste the solvent. Yet you can extract your compound. So this was differential extraction and with this I wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.